Hey everybody, welcome to the second session of Blender for Architectural Design for Complete Beginners. So in this session, we're going to look at editing mode in a little bit more detail. We're going to go through the toolbar and look at the most essential options for understanding how to model for architectural design. We're not going to look at every single option because we want to know only the tools that get us to work as quickly as possible. If you want to look at more detailed overview, make sure you check out Blender's playlist on fundamentals for each particular part of Blender. So let's get started. If you haven't watched the previous video, make sure you do. So this is where we left off in the previous video. We have one object, which is a rate with three modifiers in the X, Y, and Z directions. And we were able to slightly modify the object. Now, let's go back to our original object. And we do that by going into edit mode. The tab key helps us switch between object mode and edit mode. So it's one that you tap all the time. Tap the tab key. So now if we go into edit mode, so what if we want to create some new geometry? So there's a series of different ways to do that. The easiest is something called edge loops. So that basically divides our geometry evenly throughout the whole object. So within this toolbar, by the way, there is an invisible line, which is about the same distance away as it is on the other side of the menu. And if you click and hold that and click and hold to expand it once, you get this kind of menu where it's two columns. And if you expand it a little bit more, you get to see the actual name. I do recommend doing this so you get familiar with the different kind of tools. So if you look in here, this is where we find loop cut. So now, if we hover over somewhere, we see that we have the possibility of a yellow triangle. And now if you click once, we get a loop cut. If I click and hold, we can drag the loop cut around between the two extremities. And if we click escape, it puts it in the middle. So we've sort of subdivided our mesh and we've created some new geometry. Now, it's important to understand that this kind of new geometry can only exist if our faces are made up of four vertices. In other words, they're quad faces. So for example, if we duplicate, and let me turn all these array modifiers here. Let's go to object mode. And this is another hotkey that's quite important. It's shift D to duplicate. And now I'm going to press the X axis to hold the X and move this object back here. In here, I'm gonna to go to regular select box I'm going to select everything, so select all, and then let's go to mesh, or rather face, and triangulate faces. So now you see we have different triangulations, so each face is made up of three vertices, so you can see it split each quad into two tries. So now, if we try to do a loop cut, we can't do it. Why not? Because loop cuts work only with quad geometry. And that's one concept that's quite important in Blender and understanding it takes a little bit of time to understand, especially if you're coming from nerves modeling or from SketchUp modeling, and that's topology of your mesh. So basically the best way to work with Blender is maintaining good topology so we can further refine it and subdivide it when it's needed. And that means having only quad faces. If we have tries or if we have angons, for example, let's go and create an angon. I'm going to go and select one vertex, this vertex over here, and let's press X. X is a hotkey for delete, and the idea is that most of the hotkeys are around your left hand, so you have one hand on your keyboard, and then you have the other hand on your mouse as much as possible. So X and these all vertices and now we have a really funny face so now let's see if we can do a loop cut on that face we can't so if we go back to our other object and now we can see we can do loop cuts so these two objects they look exactly the same but topologically they're quite different if you would like to show the kind of topology that we're working with we can actually go and cycle through some of the other possible view shading modes and they're located in the top right hand corner so right now, we're in, in a solid view. We can go to wireframe view. And as you can see in wireframe, we can see the full sort of subdivision of the element. Next, we have material view. So that gives us a nice preview, especially when we start to play with materials, we'll understand that better. And the last one is rendered view. And again, that's not going to look 
too much different at the moment because we don't really have any materials, any backgrounds or anything set. Within solid mode, so if you go back to that, there's an icon just to the left, which is X-ray. And that allows us to see 3D object. If we click and hold this arrow, we have some options that allow us to help with the views. So the first one is this matte cap or this sort of light environment. And we want to select the middle one, which is the outdoor one. So that's going to make all the objects a little bit brighter. The next important element is where it says X-ray. So if you uncheck it, you see it also unchecks it over here. And if we check it, it enables X-ray. So we can specify the amount that we can see through. Now it's not a complete gradient between zero and one. As you can see, the cutoff between one and anything less than one is quite significant, but it does help us make it, everything even more transparent. And as you can see here, now we can see through that object and we can also select it. If we click and toggle selection, we can select more the multiple objects. So let's uncheck that and let's continue to edit our object. So now we have it selected. Let's click tab to edit. And we did create some new vertices. So now let's move them again around. So we'll get take this vertex here and let's move it out. Now let's select an edge and let's move that edge around. So the next important tool that we need to know is extruding region. So if you click on that and make sure you have face selection, we have this sort of element that comes up, which is a plus sign. So if you click and hold that plus sign, you see we're now extruding the face. If we click it again, we keep extruding it. Let's click another face. There are options that show us exactly what's going on. So let me enable those because I don't have them enabled by default. And we see here at the header, we have either normal or XYZ. And that's the direction or the face orientation in which it extrudes. So now if we change to XYZ, we see now we have three sort of arrowheads with plus signs. So if we click on that, that follows exactly the global coordinates for extrusion. So sometimes you may want that and sometimes it can produce very beautiful or rather terrible results. So I'm going to undo that. So let's go back to normal and we can continue to extrude. We can also specify the precise extrusion height. So let's type one and we have something that's extruded exactly one unit. We can also extrude multiple faces. So I'm going to select this face and shift click to select the second face. And it sort of finds the average normal of the two. In this case, these two faces have the exact same normal direction. So they're going to extrude nice. Let's try something different here. Let's try this face and this face. And now if you extrude, you see it also extrudes along the average normal direction of the two elements. So we can keep extruding as much as we like. And the nice thing is that the topology of this element is still rather nice and everything is quads. So if we look around at any face, it's bound by four vertices. So if you ever want to subdivide the geometry further, we can go and click loop cut and we have a very seamless subdivision. So let's take a look at what our object looks now. If we array it, now it's going to be a series of the same elements that array it all the way around. And again, within the arrays, we can change the look. By the way, this is using Blender 2.9. If you're using the long-term version of Blender 2.83, your array modifiers are going to look a little bit different. The interface has been revamped with a very good capability of being able to drag them around. But the user interface has changed a little bit. Everything is made into a, uh, one column. So it may be a little bit harder to find some options. But that's why I'm going to use the newest version so you get familiar with it. And I also get familiar with it because this is new to me as well. So that's it for series two. Please make sure you like this video. If it helps you out, it helps me out as well. If you're happy with what you're seeing and you get value from that, consider purchasing the asset files to support this channel further. At the moment, those files are fairly basic, but as we develop our skills with Blender together, those files are going to continue getting more and more advanced. Thank you guys for getting to the end of this video. And in the next video, we're going to start modeling with an actual example now that we know the overall basics of how Blender works. So see you next time.